I am an architect. Uh, I love being an architect. And I decided I wanted to be an architect when I was 12 years old. And I will be forever, ever thankful that I've had the opportunity of designing academic buildings all over the world for the last 35 years. There are some really, really cool things about designing academic buildings. But one of the most important things is all of you sitting here. In reality, if we can build a building that somehow facilitates your ability to learn and grow at a young age, what more could we do for society? And in particular, personally, if we could do it just a little bit better to actually inspire you, to inspire you, wouldn't that be terrific? The other thing that I really like about architecture is it's a nasty little problem. And what you start to look at is if you look deeply, you realize it's always different. It's a different culture. It's a different environment, a different biological sense to what it happens, different kinds of programs, different kinds of people. And what it deserves is actually a unique custom-crafted solution for you. Now, this actually, amazingly, is not a problem because this is one of the few places in society where we can actually custom make something. You can obviously tell I can't get a custom made suit, but I can actually design a building that could be custom made for you. But here's the challenge. We'd have to be courageous enough to be willing to fly the prototype. The other thing that we'd have to do is we'd have to do the quote that's up behind me. We'd have to ask the question, why do we do it that way? And this question of why is not just about architecture. It's about everything. It's about everything that you need to change in your life. It's the doorway open to all creativity, innovation. It's the question, why? But we don't ask that question, what do we normally get? Mid-rise housing. You may say, Jim, I'm not buying this idea that you get all this custom-made stuff. It looks pretty formulaic to me. Hard for me to argue. Why? Is it because architects aren't talented? I don't buy that. And we can always blame the client is not willing to spend the money or they're not committed enough. Easy target. But I don't think that's true either. I think it's much more insidious than that. And it sort of goes like this. I'm going to come to you and I say, hey, I have this idea. I think we should do this. And you say, yeah, yeah, that sort of seems like what I thought. And, and maybe the next logical thing is we would do this. And I go, yeah, yeah, okay, I'm okay with that. And we start to work back and forth towards consensus. And we're feeling good about it. And pretty soon, we're on a rail. And we are moving efficiently along, very quickly, feeling good about ourselves, to some place. Sadly, when we end up in that place, there's a whole bunch of other people there, because they followed the same raft, and we'll find that we didn't get there on the basis of our imagination or our creativity or our innovation. We got there because it was a safe, familiar path to go. And we'll find out when we land there, it's actually kind of boring. And so I'm lucky to be surrounded by a whole bunch of people that I work with who work really hard to make sure that we don't and I don't get caught on that rail. And as I get older, I have to constantly remind myself that as I gain more wisdom, it's not that I know the way to do it, but I might know how to find the way to do it. And those are totally, totally different things. So with the Millikan Institute, the public health school here at GW, that's that building that's on the right. I'll just for background I'll tell you, it sits in the upper corner of the campus, the northwest corner of the campus right on Washington Circle, great site. It's kind of an oddly shaped site. You can see here before the building was put on it. And right from the get-go, you start to be told sort of what to do. It's a thing called zoning, and what zoning wants you to do is not build a building that's taller than 90 feet. It wants you to fill up the site to about 90% of the site. And, and frankly, the client rightfully wants to develop all the square footage it can on the site as well. And so this is simple. What do you do? It's an academic building. So what we'll do is we'll take all the, the student program and we'll put them on the lower level. 
the first few floors of the building. You know, because they come and go and they kind of make a lot of noise. They're kind of the rumbling herd. Maybe we can keep the pizza boxes kind of controlled that way. And then we'll turn around and we'll take the faculty and we'll put them up on the top of the building. The views are really nice up there. And then in the extreme of this, we'll take the most important faculty, the senior researchers, and we'll line them up right along the Washington Circle facade so they can have the great view of Washington Circle. And the graduate students, I don't know if any of you are graduate students, but if you were, you'd understand you're going to get that space sort of in the back. We could have done that building, and everyone would have been perfectly comfortable. Everybody would have thought we did the right thing. We might have even talked to ourselves into thinking, yep, this seems like the right thing. If we benchmarked lots of other academic buildings, we would have been confident that we were exactly where we needed to be. If we had done that building, you might have gone to it, and I'm pretty sure you'd never invite me to talk to you on this stage. So we have to go about it in a different way. So what might that different way be? So I have a little test for you. I want you to tell me right now how to get to the top of this tree. Which branch do you go up? Too many options? It's a tough problem. You have to think about it a bit. Maybe you'd have to try some. You'd have to go up a few branches, see what it looks like, and those kinds of things like that. So it means you have to kind of be open-minded about it. The other thing you need is you need ambition. Now, this may be, seem like a crazy thing, but I've actually had, showed that slide before, and somebody basically told me the problem is I had too complicated a tree, that I needed a simpler tree, that I needed to simplify the problem, which is part of the problem. We don't need simpler problems. We need elegant solutions to complex problems. Totally different thing. So let me tell you through the, the story of the building. The convention is, OK, 90 feet. We've got to go 14 foot floor to floor. We'll put six stories in. It's almost de designed. And this will be the death of any kind of design if we were to execute this. So what we have to do is we have to come in and say, OK, we've got to lower the floor to floor to get it to be about 12 feet. So then we can actually insert another floor. And then that gives us the opportunity to cut holes all through the building, but we still save the amount of square footage that the client wanted originally. And now we potentially have something to work with. The problem is it's really hard to design this program in a building that short. It's unbelievably difficult because you've got to get the structure to be really thin. And so we have to invent a way to get 40 feet across these classrooms with this really thin structure. But that's OK. We have really smart people. We know what we need to do, and this is where innovation can save the day if you have a little courage. We figured it out. The next thing is social geometry. Maybe you could actually have the radical idea of putting the faculty and the students on the same floor. Kind of seems like that might work. And if we did that, maybe it makes sense to put the faculty down on the residential street, which is in this blue bar, and put the students in their two kinds of spaces, their introspective classrooms and, and their kind of informal learning spaces, and put them out on the circle. Now, it may seem counterintuitive, but we have to get this building approved by the city and by the neighborhood. And I will tell you, the neighborhood really liked the idea that all down their street, they have small windows in faculty offices, and the faculty are more likely to go home at night and shut those lights off and calms the whole building down next to the neighborhood. And so we get their approval. And the city is thrilled that what they have to animate Washington Circle is not just a building, but you. You there at god-awful nights of the night, who knows how late you stay there. But if it's a nice enough building to stay, you're there. And now you are the object that the city loves to see. So we now maybe have something we can work with. It's a bit like a beehive. You can crack it open. We can bring natural light down into the middle of this deep block. But the other thing we can start to do is create pathways, bridges, stairs, other kinds of things, and make them irresistible that you would walk up them. And while we need to be sensitive to people with disabilities so they can move around the building, we also need to understand from what was just said that the health benefits of having you actually walk up and down a building is something that you might think should be in a public health school. When you go through and look at other kinds of things, a kind of cross-section of the building, we have those spaces of quiet repose. 
We have those center staircases. We have these kind of inward-looking classroom spaces. And then we have these things that were fundamentally important to the way we thought about the project. And there are these kinds of lounge spaces that sit out on the circle. We also thought it was important to connect vertically. And while we have a very traditional atrium, the thing that you see um, uh, on the left, we also have something that I, I, I think is much more interesting. And that is we took little bits of space away from the lounges that sit over Washington Circle. And what this has an effect of doing is it's a little bit like all of us sitting in a tree. And maybe a few, me and a few of my friends are sitting on our branch, and you're sitting on your branch, and I can see you, and you can see us, but you're still on your branch, and I'm still on my branch, and I have a little bit of privacy. And it's a concept of could we be alone, but to somehow together? And does that somehow help us as a community of, of learners who are trying to search out and understand important things? Programmatically, we could take a very simple thing that are classrooms, but even there we try to just say, you know, we shouldn't make this too obvious and too easy. They, the classrooms varied in size and they're kind of represented by these baskets, and we could have stacked them all over each other. The reality is, you could actually stack them a different way. And when you stack them a different way, you get an interesting effect. Not only are they objects, but they're objects that actually create space between and around them. And now we have a vehicle that says, okay, the baskets, the objects, are the classrooms, but the space they create around them start to define these informal learning spaces as well. It so happens it's very helpful to drive columns and air ducts and a whole bunch of other things through these things when they're actually not stacked over each other, if you think about it, than it would be if you just drop them all over each other, but that's a very different story. So, what do you get? Well, if you combine all these things together, what you get is architecture. But I would argue maybe there's a different way of looking at architecture. Maybe it's a different way of looking at me. Maybe I'm not just the coat I wear. Maybe it's what's under the coat. It's what, it's what who I am. And so buildings could be inanimate objects, but I would argue you, when you occupy them, make them alive. And when you go out and walk around the city, look for buildings, and see if they look like they're having beautifully tailored clothes on kind of inanimate mannequins. Or maybe they're not dressed so well, but they're alive. Thank you very much.